What's good, everybody? This is Cream Spinach Joe, and I am bringing you another episode of Math, Science, and Modern Warfare 3. Uh, today, we will be talking about that last and fourth reaction in the organic chemistry world. We will be talk we're going to be talking about the E1 reaction. And if you are unfamiliar with uh, the previous reaction, the E2 reaction, uh, feel free to watch that video because it will give some big insight into how this uh, reaction works as well. And so again, uh, like I said in the previous videos, uh, a caveat to this is that uh, I am three years rusty on this material. Um, so, however, that doesn't mean I am not capable of talking about it. I am very capable of talking about it. I did very well in my chemistry classes. However, I probably couldn't be a, I probably couldn't teach us in a university setting, but surely for YouTube, I could, I could definitely do it. Um, so, Let's begin now. Um, in this reaction, um, we're going to be taking two compounds, and we're going to be getting three. Uh, and by that, I mean um, you know you're going to have a polar water and a negatively charged uh, chlorine, and you're going to get a hydronium, uh, an H3O plus, with that chlorine minus. So um, that's just how it's going to work for this reaction now. Uh, this video will be somewhat short, uh, so we'll see what happens. Uh, let's uh, let's look at the first step for this reaction, um, and that is the picture you are seeing right now. Now, um, here uh, we are in a solvent of water, right, and that should be a hint of where we're getting uh, part of that H3O plus product from, um, and uh, it's going to be a very very slow step, right? In fact, this is going to be the rate determining step. So, um, aided by that polar solvent of water, uh, that chlorine molecule uh, will leave with that electron pair bonded to the carbon. Remember, the uh, negative water is polar, so the chlorine and the and the water will work well together. And now that turns, and then this this slow step, uh, when that when that chlorine leaves, it will give rise to the carbocation. And remember, a carbocation is just a carbon with a positive charge, and it'll give rise to that chlorine chloride ion. And again, like the other reactions, uh, these ions are solvated and stabilized by the surrounding molecules. Now, the reason why this is a slow step is because uh, the Gibbs free energy. Again, we're talking about that a lot. Uh, this this that plays a very important role in, in the mechanisms for chemistry. Um, it, it requires a lot of energy to get. Um, to this point, uh, so it, it is an endothermic reaction. Now, um, let's uh, let's proceed to the second step. All right, and that is the picture you are seeing here. This step occurs much much faster. So remember, we are in a solvent of water, right? So a molecule of water uh, comes along and it removes one of the hydrogens from the beta carbon. Now keep in mind that. The alpha and beta listed on those carbons is simply to tell them apart. Uh, you are naming those carbons when you do that. Um, later in the more specific uh, examples in chemistry, they will be talking about alpha and beta elimination. However, uh, it's a little too complicated for this video, so uh, we're going to maybe deal with that later. Um, so the that water, a water molecule removes the hydrogen from the beta carbon. Right, These hydrogens are acidic. Um, due to the adjacent positive charge, right? This makes sense because hydrogen is po has positive charge. Um, so at the same time this happens, uh, the electron pair moves to form a double bond between the alpha and the beta carbons. And, and again, you know those atoms, like I keep saying in every video, the electrons move along and it just it causes kind of a chain reaction and the train just keeps moving. Um, and so that gives rise to our H3O plus and uh, so we get our hydronium ion and our alkene, right? And and that's pretty much it for this reaction. Um, again, uh, keep there is uh, a product of Cl minus, uh, but keep in mind, remember we said the ions are solvated by the surrounding water molecule, so uh, that that is not shown here uh, because it just wouldn't make sense. Uh, the chlorine would bond with the uh, water molecules. Um, and so this this state occurs very fast. Um, it does not require a lot of Gibbs free energy to uh, get this across. And you know what? That 
that's it for the E1 reaction. I know it just it seems easier, but trust me, it, it is harder um, when you're doing it for um, other examples. Now, the reason why I show you um, these four reactions um, is because uh, if you are serious about studying chemistry, um, these four organic reactions in the in this episode and the previous episodes, they are essentially the main building blocks um, to do all mechanisms in organic chemistry. Um, if you understand these principles and know them by heart, um, organic chemistry becomes child's play. It becomes very, very easy when you're dealing with mechanisms and such. Now, when you hit later levels like like, like physical chemistry and you, and kind of instrumental analysis, that, that won't make a difference. Right? You don't do that. Um, at least in my undergraduate experience, um, organic chemistry is really the only time you're doing these type of mechanisms, unless you're taking like an advanced organic or you're doing your senior project. Um, that's it. So, again, um, these four reactions, the SN1, the SN2, the E1, and the E2 reactions, um, those are the building blocks um, that uh, kind of let you do whatever you want to in organic chemistry. Now, granted, uh, keep in mind that we did both these, re that we did many of these reactions in a solvent of water. Keep in mind that different solvents will give rise to different things uh, with many different types of reactions. Um, and we'll see if uh, we'll do a commentary about that in the future. Uh, but again, um, if you want to think of it um, kind of like in physics, right, you, you kind of start off, uh, you know, you have, you have those, the gravity and the electromagnetism and the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force and that kind of makes everything work um, in the math world you know you get you know you have your idea of associative properties and uh, distributive properties with numbers and that kind of gives rise to a whole slew of stuff um, so that that's how important uh, these mechanisms are in organic chemistry um, so once again if you're serious about it um, you can do lots and lots of things. Um, you can do hydroboronation. Uh, you can use palladium catalysts. Uh, you can use all sorts of uh, all sorts of different types of solvents, um, like C two H five O N A or C two H five O H. I mean, there's just there. You know, there's just so so much you could do um, with these reactions, and uh, I really. I encourage you that if you if you look at um, at these solvents, you can get a lot of cool stuff and a lot of different reactions. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I explained it well. Uh, thank you for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, feel free to subscribe to the channel and like the video. And as always, you can follow me on Twitter at Cream Spinach Yo. And of course, have a great day.